everybody. It's Dr. Bella. I'm driving on the road. It's like 8, 8.05 to be exact <laughs> on the road. And so we're going to take this opportunity to answer a question today because I am always out there to help you guys. And so the question I have for today is, drum roll. Okay. Go, go ahead. Uh, the question is, the dark night of the soul. How do you know when you are, I guess, battling the dark night of the soul? And what is the dark night of the soul? Is it ego or is it something completely different? Okay. So the first thing you have to understand about the dark night of the soul is that it is a form of... It is a phase in awareness, okay? And so while we're busy doing the meditations and taking care of our, our physical temple here and we're doing our work, our, you know, our inquiries and stuff on, on our ego and on dispelling shadows, there's going to come a point where you'll, you'll feel that all of that work um, lifts and you feel lighter. You feel really good. And that was usually where people get stuck. So they go, oh, God, finally, I feel at peace. This feels so good. This, is, this has got to be about what it is about, you know. And then the unthinkable happens, okay. And so we're really talking about this now because so many people are going through it. And um, they're asking, you know, what the hell is happening to me? I don't understand. Things are going really well. The dark night of the soul is not the ego. It is an awakening. Please understand that. The, the reason it's the dark night is that to further understand this in a way that you can, you have to see and realize that all is one. Like we are literally all connected. Everything we do, good or bad, is connected. And we tend to love to focus, especially in this phase of our life where we're, when we're coming to our own spiritual awareness, we just want to focus on the stuff that feels so good, you know, because we understand vibration. We don't want to get stuck down into places that are, that are, that are dark and nasty. And so we want to stay and, but you can't, when you're going to fully awaken, you're going to have to see those things and know those things that are troubling to you. And the reason for that is because if you do not see it, you can't change it. Okay. And, um, I'm just going to take my seatbelt off there and get comfortable. Um, it's critical. Okay. So when you're, I just want to say, you know, when you're first going, I kind of make that little chart where I have a little man down here and he's like this little stick guy. Right. And he's at his drop point, which is like the worst place in his life where he feels like, you know, hell is going on. And, and he, and he just, this, this is the perfect place to awaken. And then I, I typically with this graph, I draw a little mountain. Well, it's not really small. It goes, you know, and there's a little cloud at the top and you can see kind of the sun that's kind of, and little guys going, oh my God, I've got to climb that mountain, but I can't see how far I have to go. I can only see that there's sun beaming from the cloud. So I know that there's light there. Now, this is kind of the diagram that I use for the process of what is, what I feel is a really good description of what it's like to wake up. Okay. So you start at that drop point where life is just horrible and you can't take it anymore. You either are thinking about ending it or things just totally fall apart. They just totally, they're not working. And those can be drop points too, where you just realize that things in your life are definitely not working. And then once you begin this journey, there are, it, it's a lot of effort. I get a little bit upset with, with any coach or any spiritual teacher that says, oh, it's so effortless. At this phase of awakening, it's not effortless because you've been going on a habit for quite some time. Understand that when you're going on a habit, you've got to, what do they say? Habits are hard to break. Hello. So there is going to be some effort and that's why it, there's a climb. Okay. It's not where it's a straight line. It's a climb into your own awareness. 
and you're going to go through these challenges where they feel hard because you're reintegrating things like meditation and you're doing other things that you typically didn't do before. See, the world in its, in its sleeping state reaches for everything external when the challenges come. They go, I need a cigarette. I need a drink. I need to go get laid. I need anything to get me out of my head. And, and that never works because the head's running the show. See what I'm saying? And this is a completely different space. You're going inside. You've got to really explore who you are, what kind of thoughts you've been holding, how they got there. And then you do your work on healing it. So it's a totally different paradigm, a totally different way. If you have a bad day, you don't go, I need a drink. You go, I might need to take this to paper. I may need to take this to mirror for mirror work and start really doing some mirror work and some deep affirmations on myself. Um, the dark night of the soul sits somewhere, I think, at about, I feel, a quarter of the way up. Not halfway, about a quarter of the way up. So this can kind of show you, in a diagram form, what kind of you, you, effort you'll be putting into your meditating, you know, keeping yourself disciplined and, and doing your work, right? And the, you'll have this kind of luminous, peaceful space right in between where you go, oh, and this is just the universe going, this is the sweet nectar of the gods, keep going. It's kind of just an incentive. The next step is so critical. The dark night of the soul is critical because if you never see this, you'll just go around the rest of your life in la-la land. I'm not kidding. You'll just go, oh, 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 it's wonderful. Okay, so what happens is it's almost like the roots of who you are, because remember that you were born from Mother Earth. She gave you life. She gives you life every day with her breath, her oxygen, with the food that she gives you every single day. She blesses you. Okay, so in this spiritual space, it's like you stick the roots of all you know go back into her. What she does is she informs you of the spaces that need healing in the world. And that means everywhere. And so if you were ignoring the fact beforehand that majority of the cosmetics that you buy actually are not cruelty free, they are testing them on animals, many of them are poisonous, you'll go, oh, wait a minute. I didn't even think about that kind of stuff. That's really important to me right now. If you hadn't been thinking about what's going on in the slaughterhouses or how we um, deal with our animals and how we just so nonchalantly put their corpses on our plates when we know what's going on and their mother earth tells you, creator tells you, in that moment it's an instant and you go, ugh, and it is downloaded into your soul because you needed to know it. So, and I, and I mean, it's everything. I mean, it's everything. The people that are, the children that are getting abused, the pollution on the planet, the children who are losing out on and having a possible future. You are automatically charged at that moment. It's like God says to you, you have a purpose. You got to do something about this. And the only way I can do this is to show you. Yeah, you have a question. So... <clears throat> When you become like fully aware and you have jumped into the dark night of the soul, as you call it, like full awareness. It's a, pro a process of it. it, it you know, sure. I, mean, it, I will tell you, it's definitely like shaving off layers of the garbage that you were hanging over your, your veil. You know, you literally can't see. This is the truth. You're just moving shadows. And Course in Miracles talks about that a lot. You know, that the Son of God is there all the time. And so that is a shadow that just goes, woof, you know. And it, But the point of it is you know you're on it because feelings of depression happen really quick. And it's not like you're depressed to hurt yourself or to feel. You ache for everything. And you want to talk about purging. Well, that's what I, that's what yeah. I was, that's what I was saying. When you, when you talk about full awareness in the dark night of the soul and you become, as you just said, aware of everything and you realize, I guess you become one with everything or you become into awareness of I mean, that. You, you are, are one of everything. Yes. You know, how can you look at 
animals being slaughtered the way they're slaughtered and treated the way they're treated. So you become charged with doing something about it. I mean, you literally, it is, it has to be this way. If it does not shake you up enough, you won't do anything about it. You, you, you suddenly don't become a bystander. See, what I decided to do is I even started reaching out to, to my leaders and teachers and going, Hey, maybe you don't know this, but you need to be informed before you make a decision, which can perpetuate the problems on this planet. Let me inform you. And, and by the way, that takes a lot of guts. Okay. Um, to do it, but you do that kind of stuff. You go, well, where do I have the power to do things and make it right? And automatically it's like you there through the pain, you fall further into the soul and the spirit. You fall so in, into the grace of God. You fall into the arms of God. You fall because you go, I cannot bear it anymore. The pain you become empathetic and humans are supposed to be empathetic they didn't come onto this planet without having compassion and empathy because we were charged with caring for the mother she gave us life now we were charged for caring with all of it we love it but we shit on it and when you go through the dark night of the soul it is one of those parts and thank god it's it's not one of those things you got to duplicate like every dun, dun, dun. now you will get different variations of it like um if if you're exposed to something that you didn't know that came through you through synchronicities through miracles because it's all that you know coming to you and it stops you in your tracks and you go wow mm. you know then this dark night you go i've been here before i know what to do with it i fall into grace and i move forward into action I don't just tell people you shouldn't do that. If you're in the store and you're purchasing foods that, that give you cancer, that give you parasites, and that feed an industry that keeps you sick. I'm doing the wrong thing. Stop. You have that kind of power. I just told my son the other day, I said, you know, we can stand there and we can riot and we can pick it and we can scream about it all day long, but it's going to come down to your decisions. If you don't buy this, this specific stuff, even if it's, you know, cosmetics or if it's stuff you put in your hair or if it's food you stick in your mouth and you stop buying it, it, it's, they can't sell it. It rots. It goes. And if they can't sell it, they have to change. They either go out of business or they go and they give what the people are looking for. The people never lost their power. This is the the, the, the big, it's a big lie. It's a big, stupid, horrible lie that we're all victims of circumstance when we have so much power. You get to go into the store every day and you get to declare, what do I want to put into my body? You choose. You do. You absolutely choose. And you have that much power. And you know, you get a collective of people together because you're never the same after the dark night of the soul. You know that. You're never the same. What happens is... You are, it can last a couple of days. It can last a day. Mine lasted about three. Anywhere from, you know, I hear uh, two days to five days is kind of typical. And if you go, God, that's so long. But you have to understand, you will come out of it so transformed that you go, the five days was worth it. Because yeah. I see, and I didn't see before. And now I see when people make their choices, what they're saying yes to. Are, which which hand are you feeding in the world? That's what the dark night of the soul shows you. It wakes you up. And then it blesses you. You see, because th then you go, okay, now. Now what, God? Let me move in this grace. Let me move in this space. And God goes, and so you shall. And immediately what follows a dark night of the soul is a feeling of ecstasy and elation. So that you know what just occurred. That there wasn't like an empty, hollow, God, when am I just going to try to get through it? You know, because that's what the ego does already. <clears throat> it's just one heart instance from another, right? This is not it. This is a real journey. This is the real deal. This is the only reason we're here is to wake up, to do better, to be more amazing, to be God in our human expression. That's why we're here. And we can do this because um, this is an incredible time to be alive right now. I mean, we're waking up and that's a beautiful thing. 
from Dr. Boa Jade Michael saying, I love you guys. I hope that was very helpful. <laughs> um, was it helpful for you? Yes, very much so. Uh, Thank you. Do you have any more questions? Uh, no, 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 not. Well, I think if I have any more questions, we'll do, I'll, I'll be more than happy to, <laughs> to do another session. So. Okay, good. Okay. Take care. I love you.